What's happening guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I have a very special guest. This person has probably gotten more people jobs in management consulting than anyone who's ever existed in the entire history of the world. Welcome to the channel, Davis. I really appreciate you coming on the channel, man. Great to be here, Shane. All right. Well, hey, let's get into it. I kind of want to ask you a few questions about your story. I was asking you a little bit, but I want to find out more. So I know you got into management consulting and you, you know, started helping other people get into it. It's a very prestigious career. A lot of people want to get into it. I get a lot of comments on my channel for instance. Um, so how did you get into it in the first place? Can you kind of tell me your story? My journey to management consulting is actually quite atypical. So before I talk about how I actually got into management consulting, I'm actually going to talk about how I even ended up knowing what management consulting was about. So I was raised by a single mother. And so my mom, my, my grandparents as well, they immigrated from Vietnam after the war before I was born. So they were farmers before. So my grandparents didn't finish high school. My mom never went to school. And so when they moved to the U.S., they basically were political refugees. And so they did service type work. So my mom, for example, she's disabled, so she couldn't work. But my grandpa would like repair TVs and my grandma would do nails or do house cleaning. And so growing up, we didn't really have much of a career path. My grandma, my mom, my grandpa basically just said, just do better than us, as in you can make more than minimum wage. And so that was that was the goal. And as I, as I went through school, the school system I went to was called the worst school system in America. So imagine there's over 130,000 school districts. And then your school district is called the worst school district in the U.S. So we even have a saying at my, my community. It was called, people go to jail, not to Yale. And that was the community we grew up in. And so as a result, oh, when I finally got into college, I remember sitting down at freshman dinner, so our first year dinner, and already people around the table were asking, what do you want to do after college? I'm like, I just got it. I just, I just want to make sure I succeed because not many people in my community actually get to go to college. And I remember people going around saying, you know, I want to be a lawyer. I was like, oh, you know, yeah, I know some divorce lawyers from back in my community. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, make, they make pretty decent money. And then another friend who would end up being one of my best friends said, I want to be a banker. I didn't comment because in my mind, I was like, wait, you're going to college to be a banker? I know a couple of friends who barely finished high school. They're working at Bank of America. They're making like $7 an hour. Why did she want to be a banker going to college? It makes no sense to me. Of course, I had no clue what investment banking was. I had no clue what a corporate lawyer was, let alone a career like management consultant. And so what I knew was that when I was in college, I was just very inspired by so many what I was seeing. Because in the community I grew up in, like I mentioned, I didn't have many role models. People went to jail, not to Yale. And so anytime I had a chance to learn about different career paths, every time I read a book, watch a TED Talk, whatever it was, I didn't know anybody. I would just email the person. So for example, if I read a Tony Robbins book, I would just email Tony Robbins. If I read a Tim Ferriss book, I would just reach out to Tim Ferriss, Keith Rossi, Susan K, whoever it was, I would just reach out. And I ended up interning for a lot of them and I didn't know how to price it well. So some summers I would just literally make a thousand dollars for three months worth of full-time work. I, I didn't know any better. And But at the end of the summer, each of them would say something like, you know, Davis, you should sharpen some business skills and just general life skills. Why don't you become a management consultant? And that was the first time I ever heard of it. And this was the third year of my university before I went back for my final year before I graduated. And so three of my mentors reached out and said, Davis, honestly, you should consider something called management consulting. And I was like, what is that? And so I started Googling and looking it up. And I realized that, oh, this is a real career that, wait, you're telling me I can make over $100,000 right out of college. I don't need a business degree. At the time I had a liberal arts degree. I think I can literally be an English major and make six figures. But also at the same time, I'm getting to learn these business skills. So management consultants, if anyone doesn't know, it's like a business doctor where a company, let's say like Facebook, Google, or Hilton or whatever, would hire you in and they have this problem. Like they want to launch into a new country or a new product. But before they invest billions of dollars into it, they'll hire consultants for millions of dollars to come in and say, hey, which country should we launch in? Should we launch this hardware product? And you're hired out of school in a team to learn about these business concepts, get mentored by these CEOs and be able to just soak in all this business knowledge so that you can learn, but at the same time grow. And then your salary starts multiplying and doubling and tripling. In fact, there, by the time I would have been 25, if I was still working in consulting, I would have made a quarter of a million to half a million dollars before like bonuses and everything else like that. And that's on top of the fact that they would also have sponsored me if I wanted to go back to school for my MBA, my law degree, my PhD, whatever. They would sponsor that. And I was like, wow, that is an amazing career. But again, back to my summer, my third year, I was like, wow, that's amazing. And so I started talking to 
my friends who wanted to be consultants. I was like, hey, the thing you mentioned last year about consulting, tell me a little bit more about it. How do you get it? It's like, Davis, the deadlines are three weeks away. You realize people prepare for this years in advance, right? Mm -hmm. So no, I just literally learned about this last week about what is. I mean, you mentioned it at dinner at one point, but I was like, "What, what is that?" Mm-hmm. And so Dave's all right. You you need to figure out how to do this. And so I had basically three weeks to figure out how to get into consulting. But luckily now I know it's really two things. Like one, you just have to get the interview, and two, you have to pass the interview. Mm-hmm. So to get the interview, you just need a resume, a cover letter, and if they do an online test, you do an online test. I didn't have a resume. I didn't have a cover letter. I didn't know what that was. And so I had to figure out how to write a resume, how to write a cover letter. And then you have something called a case interview where they'll give you a business problem. Like, for example, one of the interviewers might have worked for, let's say, they might have worked for Amazon and given you a project that Amazon would have worked on and said, hey, how would you solve this problem? And they want to see how you think through it. And of course, you don't have to have a business degree or anything to be able to solve it. They just want to know that this person is a good thinker. They like to solve problems and they're a creative thinker. Mm-hmm. And so I had three weeks to figure out how to do this all in two years. And But basically, I cracked the system because... I realized instead of me trying to figure out how to do this, I'm gonna to talk to people who made it to the other side. And so I started emailing people at all the firms I wanted to apply to. So for example, if I wanted to apply to McKinsey, I would email like 40 people from McKinsey and just ask them two questions like, one, how did you get in? And two, what are the interview questions like? And of course, if you have like 40 at McKinsey, 40 at Accenture, 40 at Deloitte and all these other consulting firms, you can kind of figure out, all right, so they tend to ask questions at McKinsey about so-and-so. And if you're at Accenture, you're going to get questions about market size and how big this is. And you can kind of figure out how to prepare for it. And so that's mm-hmm. how I spent my three weeks. And eventually, I would get multiple offers in consulting. I ended up picking Bain and Company because I just felt the culture really resonate. And a lot of amazing entrepreneurs came from Bain. But again, all consulting firms are known as CEO factories. So they make CEOs and founders. But it's just more of I just really looked up to some of the founders who came out of Bain and Company. So I, that's how I ended up joining management consulting. So again, going well from basically the son of farmers to going to college, not knowing what consulting is, a bunch of my mentors saying, Davis, you can make six figures out of college, learn business skills and network with CEOs and just have something that very few, if any career will ever give you the option to do. I said, well, and then at the time I thought about, wow, you're going to pay for my quarter of a million dollar MBA if I decide to get one? Absolutely, I'm going to take this. So to me, it was like, wow, I get to get paid to learn. So that's how I ended up in management consulting was just mentors who cared about me and I figured out how to crack the process within three weeks, which normally took people a year, two years. Wow. That's awesome. That's an awesome story. So one thing I'm going to say is uh, I, just to kind of give my audience a little bit of context, um, Bain and Company, it's one of like the big four consulting firms and it's like super prestigious to work at this company. And, you know, you can work at just about any company in the world if you're able to get into Bain. Like you get in, spend, you know, a couple years there or something you can transfer to just about any company in the world. So if your goal is to work at like Google or something like that, this is a good stepping stone to that. And then in some cases, people work at Google to to get into Bain in some cases, because like it's that prestigious. And then on top of that, like you said, it's basically like a super highway to becoming a CEO because you're kind of like a doctor for a business and you really understand the whole like holistic picture, the ins and outs of a business, especially in like certain industries. And then after that, I mean, what's stopping you from starting your own business if you if you don't want to? So you have so many different directions you can go. You can become a super high paid employee that is, you know, really valued, make, you know, after bonuses and stuff, well over five hundred thousand dollars a year, especially in certain like verticals and stuff. Um, Or if you want to, you can kind of get a little more chill job. You were telling me that like some of your students kind of prefer like more of a chill job where they're, you know, not as like working as hard as high performers and stuff, or you can start your own business. So it's another one of those careers, which I absolutely love, which are super flexible. This is something I kind of preach on my channel. Go for careers that are flexible because you might change your mind down the line. You might decide, hey, I want to start a business. Hey, I want to, you know, work a lot harder and and get higher level positions. Hey, I want to try to become an executive, something like that. You don't know what you're going to do down the line. So if you're in a flexible career, you have that option. So you you got into management consulting. You came from a super difficult background, which is really common, actually, with like, you know, people who end up uh, having these big missions and doing these these big things. Like like a lot of the people we've met today came from this type of background. Um, and, you know, you 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 were very mission oriented. You, you got into that position and then you decided to help other people get into management consulting. So can you kind of tell me the story of how that happened? When I got to Bain, 
what ended up happening is Bain and many of consulting firms, it feels like an extension of trying to find yourself. Like you mentioned, Shane, it's consulting is like what well, we like. We, we have a joke where it's like people who haven't figured out what they want to do yet, or if they do want to be in business, they can just go straight ahead. But for anyone else, you can have this flexibility. For example, you mentioned none, no career path is close to you. Like, for example, you can start a business. Like one of my mentors who came from Bain ended up selling his business afterwards for $500 million to Walmart. And then, but you also have other people who come through consulting. Like, for example, another Bainy is Jason Lee, who owns, he owns Jubilee Media, who's another great YouTube channel. And then you also have other people like John Legend, who literally leveraged that to get into music after working in consulting. So the career paths are very open. But the one of the reasons why is that when you start working in consulting, you, yes, you do your case projects, you do your work, you help the clients, but they also want you to give back into the firm and build out your own skills. And one of the things you do is that you, take on, call it extracurriculars, and it could be anything that you want. For example, if you want to look more to AI, you can develop processes for how the firm deals with AI cases, or you can do more fun stuff. Like, for example, you can captain the football team or whatever it is that you want to do. For me personally, I really loved recruiting because I knew that I came from an atypical background. I didn't know what consulting was. I didn't have a business background. I didn't have a business degree. I didn't have all, all these amazing things that my peers had. And I wanted to be able to be on the recruiting team so that I can give other people this life-changing opportunity. And so when I was in consulting, I would also do recruiting as well, where I would read resumes, I would do the interviews, and I would just make sure that people can have a chance to get into consulting. And so I did that for many years. I just loved it. And so when I left Bain, I ended up joining a education technology company. And at the time, they weren't making much money. And I was still living in California. I was still providing for, I was still providing for my mom. And I was still wanting to build a bright future for this company. So I couldn't ask for more money. So I decided on the weekends just to help people with their resumes, with their cover letters, and with their case interviews. So it just started on the weekends with me just trying to raise money. In fact, I was trying to pay off a medical bill at the time. And I couldn't take a second job or anything. But a bunch of the people who, when I was in recruiting, I would I would talk to universities. And a lot of the students came back and said, hey, Dave, it's not that you're at Bain. Could you help me with my resume, my cover letter, and my case interview skills? And that's why I ended up starting the business. And the first batch I only took 13 students in. I worked, I did everything I could. I made referrals. Worked on a resume, stayed up to make sure that their interview prep and 100%, 13 out of 13 ended up getting offers and consulting. And my first batch didn't, they weren't all people who graduated. We had like, for example, one person who had a 4.0 from Stanford who was rejected the year before and came back and was able to get them. But most of the people, some of them had like 2.1 GPAs. Some of them studied sciences. Some of them studied art. Some of them, one was a dance major. And it was like a group of people who you wouldn't think would be able to get consulting. I wanted to give them a chance as I did everything I could using the knowledge I had in consulting to be able to get them their foot in the door and eventually get them this six figure job. And obviously some of them now are like managers and higher up and some of them will be partners in a few years, which is amazing to see. And over time that word of mouth just grew and eventually my weekend business became a full time job. That's awesome. That's awesome. So I know that a lot of people out there are going to be thinking, you know, what kind of degrees do you have to have to get into consulting, right? You have to, do you have to go to an Ivy League? Do you, <laughs> do you have to uh, have a 4.0 GPA? So those are probably the things that people think of when they think of consulting, right? Because it is prestigious and, you know, you work for these great companies. But, you know, I found like a lot of the best entrepreneurs and consultants are like basically entrepreneurs yeah. uh, don't necessarily get the best grades in school, yeah. right? They, they're kind of like outside of the box thinkers, you know, they, they're not like studying till the late night or anything like that. Like they're entrepreneurs, you know, sometimes they don't get the best grades. They're like B students, you know, that sort of thing. So can you talk to those people who have those doubts? Absolutely. There's like this common misconception that because you're working in these prestigious firms and you're basically entering this world that most people will never know of, that just opens up this gateway. Like I don't think before this many people, maybe some of your audience people would have known that John Legend, for example, came from, consulting or that the CEO of Google came like it's like it's like a secret pathway right to mm -hmm. all these great positions but the the thing that is that people think that you have to have a 4.0 GPA I did not have a 4.0 GPA and majority of the people that we help do not have a 4.0 GPA they did not come from a Harvard Yale they didn't come from an Ivy League and they didn't have a business degree or business background we I think we actually work with more people who come from non-business backgrounds than we do people who are business. Now, I'm not saying that we can we can help people who are in business background because it's not a guarantee even if you have business background to be able to go into consulting. But 
we help people who are in non-business backgrounds. That's like the first thing. It's like the barriers that a lot of people think that you have to have a certain degree in order to get in, but the fact is like you, you don't. Like literally we have helped a theater major, agenda studies, a religious studies all go through because they thought they were gonna go one way with their career and they realize, no, actually I want to go into business or I don't know what I want to do, but I kind of want to pay back my student loans and also at the same time make a good salary that has future earnings. And so we've been able to help across the gambit. Absolutely. So one of the most common comments I see on my channel is, Shane, I got a degree. I'm not happy with this degree. I'm not able to you know, go into the career path that I wanted to go into, or I have to get a master's or a doctorate if I want to even have a chance, you know, something along those lines. What should I do? Right. And, you know, th that is kind of a tough position to be in because people can be, you know, hundred thousand dollars in debt sometimes with these degrees, especially in the U.S. with the way the college system is. Um, and it can be a really tough position. So uh, those are the types of people that possibly could benefit from going into management consulting because you don't necessarily have to have like a specific degree to go into it. Like you said, you helped a gender studies major, art major, um, uh, and several different art majors, right. I think you said. So in the lots of different liberal studies uh, degrees, et cetera. So um, that's pretty awesome. So I know a lot of people are probably going to ask this question. They're probably wondering this right now, right? Everyone wants to know about the money, right? Money is important. It's not the most important thing, but it's definitely important. So how much would people expect to make? And we're not talking Ivy League, you know, people coming from a normal background, normal school, first year in consulting, maybe second year as well, and then third year, and then five years down the line, something like that, just a ballpark estimate. Like, what would you expect? So consulting makes a lot of money. It shouldn't be the only reason you go into consulting because if anything, when you get into the firm, people actually rank the money is good, but there are other benefits that are even better, like the mentorship, the career path, sponsorship, and everything else you get. But to answer your question, how much money, which is also important, is that typically, let's say it will vary by the city, by, for example, if you're in the United States, which is the UK and so forth, but I'm just gonna give some average here, which is that you can expect to make like including signing bonus, relocation bonus, performance bonus, and everything else. Like even your first year, like just straight out of college with your degree or you're recently removed from college, then you're expecting like $135,000 as of this year. But this amount keeps going up every single year. So it's kind of like by the time next year happens, it might be 140, 150, 160, and so forth. Like it's been going up steadily. Like as in it was only 100,000 before. And even within two years, it's already skyrocketed up. And this is just the first year. If you have like an overt degree, like for example, anyone on this channel who had a bachelor and then you for some reason went and later on got a PhD or another advanced degree, like a MBA and so forth, you can expect to make twice as much as that just starting out. But even if you're just a bachelor degree, 125, even if after two years, your average rate is going to be about 40%. So you're already going to be seeing like you're going to make like close to 200,000. And then it's going to continue to skyrocket like that. For example, I mentioned earlier, even if you were starting at 21, by the time that you are 25, like four years into the firm, you can make anywhere between a quarter of a million to half a million dollars, depending on the projects, the firm, and so forth that you're taking on. Got it. And I know you told me you have kind of like a free training, like a master class to help people sort of decide uh, if management consulting is the right path for them. So uh, what would you say to people who are kind of like, you know, they're considering it, they're they're on the fence, they're interested in it, but they don't know whether that's the right path for them? Like, what would, what would your advice be for them? I'll say that there's a lot of people who, if consulting is something that you're considering, you should have a strong motivation for why you want to do it. And you're right, we, we do have a master class. It's completely free. And I'm assuming you will be able to include it in the show notes. And yeah, I will put that uh, down in the description and the pinned comment below to anybody who's interested. Yeah, Awesome, we'll give it. But in, in the masterclass, I actually teach the, all the reasons why people would love consulting. Like, for example, if you love learning, you love being a creative problem solver, you love obviously the salary, which we just talked about, but you also love leaving your options open for doing anything, consulting is great for you. And there are other people, and I also go into this in great detail, where consulting might not be for you. For example, if you're someone who loves working alone in consulting, you work with clients, you work with a team. If you don't like growing, you love to be the same thing every day for eight hours a day, consulting is also not for you. Because in consulting, you're going to be working with massive clients and that project's going to change. Like one week, you might be working in a healthcare project. And the following week, you might be working in a luxury brand. So it's going to change. So if you're expecting predictability, for example, consulting is definitely not for you. But if you're someone who wants to challenge, who wants to grow, that's part of consulting. And of course, in the math class, I'll talk about more reasons why, because I think one of the most important, if not the most important decision you make, similar to when I was going through the process, is that it's not 
how do I get an offer? The first question you have to answer is, do I want to be a consultant at all? And in the last class, we'll cover all that about who it's a good fit for and who it won't be a good fit for. Got it. Got it. And how many people have you helped uh, to get into consulting at this point? It's like, it's so many, like confirmed, right? right? Just the ones that are confirmed. You've probably helped a lot more people than that. but Exactly. So these are just the people who go through our full program. So we get emails of people who use our resource or even just attend our master class and do it on their own. And we, we get emails, but just the people who go through the whole full program, we're approaching 700 at the time of this recording. That That's incredible for like a high level job, like consulting to 700 people that you probably help more people get into consulting than anyone else in the world. That, <laughs> that is seriously impressive, man. Like that's, that's really impressive. So what would you say is your kind of success rate for, for students that like learn from, from your program? Sure. So for every hundred people who go through our program, 85 people, so 85% will get an offer. And in fact, multiple people get multiple offers. So a lot of people just get multiple offers and we help them negotiate. We help them get the best offer and all that as well. So 85 people out of 100 will get at least one offer. So you have quite a few like interviews, testimonials, and everyone on my channel knows that the only people that I recommend are ones who have like a lot of interviews and testimonials. That's basically my criteria for finding people. So could you talk about maybe a few of the success stories that kind of stand out uh, in your mind of people who have kind of gone through your program and, and had success with it? Sure. So we get success stories obviously coming in almost every day, but these there's some ones that always will stand out, not because they're special, but quite the opposite, which is that when you look at their background, you think there's no way this person's getting into consulting. So I'll share three that has happened recently. So one, we had a bartender who joined our program who was making minimum wage, working at a bar, was homeless for certain periods of time. And now he's working a six-figure job in consulting. So he went to a school that wasn't a big name school. In fact, you probably have never heard of it as well. And then he didn't come from a business background. Again, he was a bartender before mm -hmm. all this. So he was able to get an offer. So that's one person. He also had a low GPA. So he had a lot against him, but he used the program, which has been proven. He got an offer. We also helped a flight attendant get into consulting as well. And then there's a couple other testimonies you can find on the site as well. One of my favorites that recently happened was we helped a football coach who, again, high school football coach who mm -hmm. was making way less than what he thought he could earn and wanted to get into consulting to business skills and develop those. And he got an offer in consulting He's making six figures now as well. Yeah, yeah, that's super, super impressive what you've done. And thank you so much for letting me interview you today, yeah. taking a little bit of time off from, from the rest of the convention and everything, <laughs> letting me interview you. Um, I really appreciate it. And you know, you're changing people's lives. Love to connect with people like you all the time to, you know, to get people and like the right people in the right position at the right time, right? That's, that's what my channel is all about. I'm trying to get a million people jobs. That's my goal is to get a million people their dream job. And uh, you're doing a great job doing that with uh, management consulting. So thanks for coming on the channel. I really appreciate, appreciate it. Jay. Awesome.